Hi, this is the Global Tropico Overview for May the 23rd, 2023, and what you're looking at on your screen is Typhoon Mawar, which continues to intensify and will likely be making its final approach to Guam and surrounding islands within the next 24 hours. You can see on the satellite right now, the picture is just amazing to watch. If you pay close attention to where the eye is, you can see lots of thunderstorms wrapping around that inner core and this indicates that this system is trying to intensify that eye wall that it has built and as that happens we will likely see this thing get real strong and there is a potential for this system to be real intense by the time it gets to guam here's the island of guam up here i need a bit of color uh, on my marker but guam is up here rhoda is here tinian and saipan are here and you can see this large band to the west of the storm center and there's also another band there that just moved over guam you can see on the radar composite here from guam lots of outer bands that have come through today and it was recommended that your preparations will be done last night but there may be some time to rush some final preparations to completion in guam and rota and tinian and saipan uh, but p make sure you keep an eye on these outer bands these outer bands are capable of bringing a strong tropical storm force winds, heavy rainfall, which could lead to flooding and potentially some water spouts. Though, typically in these tropical cyclones, you get the greatest tropical or tornado risk in the northeastern quadrant rather than the northwestern, but they're not completely unheard of in the northwestern part, and they absolutely can still happen and could absolutely do some damage. Now, if we look at the current web page from the National Weather Service in Guam, you can see the current watches and warnings in place. We have a typhoon warning for the islands of Guam and Rota, and a tropical storm warning for the islands of Tinian and Saipan. And the, the track really has shifted a bit further south since I talked last night. This is a three-day cone from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. You can see that since yesterday, the center track has come a little bit further south, now showing the eye coming just south of Guam. And this still is a really bad scenario for Guam, as you would still be likely getting that eye wall, and you'd also be getting significant storm surge. And also, no, remember how last night the size of the wind wind field was not too large. Look how large the wind field is now. Translate this to here, you've got significant winds across a wide region is stretching almost to Tinian and Saipan. And if this system were to come a little bit further north, you could absolutely get some of those stronger winds in Tinian and Saipan, which is why there are tropical storm warnings in place. You can also see the, also see the typhoon force winds, and uh, this is likely becoming more symmetric around that eye as we continue to see those thunderstorms wrap around that center. Now here is the, uh, well, that's a five-day cone, but here's the earliest reasonable arrivement time of tropical storm force winds. In the earliest case that's reasonable in Guam and Rota, you could absolutely get this this morning, especially with those outer bands coming in. But for the sustained winds, for the strong wind field around this core, the most likely arrival time is tonight, local time. So we've pushed back the timing a little bit, which is why I say you might have a little more time to rush your preparations to completion. But really, today you should focus on sheltering in place as uh this is the event and you can see the odds of tropical storm force winds here especially in guam 90 percent uh this is 50 knot winds you can see very significant odds there 60 to 70 percent in guam 30 percent in rota and here is the typhoon force winds odds are increasing significantly in guam as well and really we aren't just expecting a lot of typhoon force winds in Rota. The typhoon warning is in place mainly for if the storm does come north, which it absolutely could. Right now, we're really just watching for wobbles, see exactly where the storm goes. It would not take too much of a deviation for the system to come a little bit more north, maybe go right over Guam and bring typhoon force winds to Rota. So there's a reason why we have all these warnings in place. Now, that's the impacts to the Mariana Islands, but after that, of course, if we talked, we've, we've talked about several times, this will not be the end of the story for Moir. Here's the five-day cone, and we, we can start to see some of the, the concern that we've been talking about about the system coming west. We have high confidence in the system getting trapped underneath that subtropical ridge I've talked about for days, 
and this system will likely come further west. You can see the Philippines here on the western side of this map, and you can just see how much uncertainty there is in this forecast cone. This is a large spread here, stretching for a good port. Put this in relation to the Philippines, that's a good chunk of distance of uncertainty on where the exact center could be. And of course, where the center is at this time, it's a big question of who gets what. If a system is on this track, you would likely, in the scenario that we've been seeing a lot on modeling, you would likely get the storm to brush near the Philippines, but recurve towards the north. If the system's further north, same type of deal, but it would be further away from the Philippines. If the system is further south here, we could see the system get uncomfortably close to the Philippines, perhaps even make landfall there before coming towards the southern Japanese islands. And here's some of the ensemble tracks. This is from the GFS ensembles, and you can see we've continued to have more confidence in the system coming west, but you can also see there's still a quite a bit of spread, and you can see where some of these models are differing. We've still got solutions here that are strong towards the Philippines, and we've got a lot of solutions coming towards Taiwan and the southern Japanese islands. But the majority of the tracks right now are indicating a track out to sea, and this does make sense with what models are putting out. Here's the GFS Ensemble Mean, 500 millibar flow. Again, the pattern is the same. We've got this ridge here over uh, South Korea. Here's our storm. And here's this upper trough here north of the ridge. And this trough is breaking down the eastern side of this ridge. So eventually on the model, this trough is able to dig in and it pulls the system towards the north. Now, this is over seven days out. Keep that in mind. So this stuff here is bound to change. And there's still some ensemble members wanting a potential South China Sea storm. The GFS main has really backed off on the potential for that. And so it doesn't look like that solution is very likely right now, but we are getting more confidence that this system will get uncomfortably close to regions such as Japan, Taiwan, and the Philippines. So for those out there in those regions, you need to pay close attention to more. Have your Typhoon Preparedness Kit ready just in case you have to enact it. And of course, stay tuned to the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency and your local weather office for the latest information on the storm. But that is all for today. I will leave you all with the satellite image. I'll have more videos out as the system comes towards Guam and even beyond that. I would stay safe in the Mariana Islands and I will see you all later.